All right, what's going on, everybody? Happy October 6th of 2021. Uh, this is bittersweet because obviously this is we're talking the finale of what if and what a finale we have discussed. We're talking some venom news, you know, it crushed at the box office, which still baffles the hell out of me. <laughs> but we'll be talking that. We're talking spoilers, post-credit scenes, and just so much more. I'm so excited to be here. But again, it's it's bitter because because this is the last time that we're gonna be doing this for at least for uh till the, like a month and a half with Hawkeye. And there'll be some other live streams I'll sprinkle in there. But as far as Marvel goes, we're going to have a little bit of a break from Marvel uh, because they're coming back next month and, and, and obviously for Spider-Man. But I'm going to miss uh, these discussions every Wednesday, especially with my two amazing co-hosts. And, of course, everyone that watches us live every Wednesday. But, here we, we got to celebrate first before we get all to the sad stuff. And, again, we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. So excited to be here. If you all are watching this live, again, appreciate you tuning in. Uh, make sure you're liking the video, sharing the video, subscribing to not only this channel, but, of course, my amazing co-hosts. Uh, show them some love and let's have some good discussions because we have a lot to discuss tonight. So I'm going to get that out of the way and bring in my amazing co-host who has, since the beginning of this year, with WandaVision, transitioning to Falcon Winter Soldier, going into Loki, and now what if they have been here every single Wednesdays or Saturdays, and it's just been so great uh, being able to get to Lona more and just having these great discussions, and I'm just so excited to have them on talking about this finale. Starting off with my homegirl representing Canada, who's always coming with the hot takes. I can't wait to talk some Venom winner and obviously talk about what if tonight. I'm talking about the one and only Amanda. What's going on? Amanda? Hi! What an intro. You're the yes, best. Yeah. Thank, you, thank you. How are we doing? Good, good. I'm very happy about Venom. So hey, you should be. It's it's crushing it, yeah. Amanda. And then uh, yeah. you know, we'll talk about it. We'll talk yeah. about it. But how, how have you been? How what you've been watching, what you've been up to lately? Good. Just uh, I had a whole Adam Sandler marathon today with my best friend. So Ooh, like yeah. old Adam Sandler, new Adam Sandler. We Bill did Cole. Happy Gilmore, Billy Classics. Madison, 51st yes. Dates. Gotta get that rom com in there. So it was a nice. good night. Nice nice chill day today you know yeah was it was there something is it adam is his birthday or something or just feeling no, adam sandler was, mood? we were supposed to do it for his birthday and then okay, we just kind of okay. like postponed but uh yeah it was just that, nice and what, chill that run that he was on between him and jim carrey in the 90s i don't know who had a better run with the happy gilmore's right. and the big daddies of the world i mean mm -hmm. he's, he's an icon even though he makes some movies now that are you know not the best but still our guy you grow up with him you can't, yeah. can't hit on the on the sandman but exactly. that sounds like an awesome day amanda a yeah. really fun day it but was fun. Hey, why don't you let the people at home know that's watching this for the first time, watching the replay. Who are you? Where can they find you? And why are you so awesome? Oh, <laughs> well, you guys can always find me over at AMX NDA Reviews on Twitter, Instagram, and Letterboxd. I'm a film critic and entertainment journalist. Um, I'm watching The Last Duel tomorrow morning and then No Time to Die next week. Um, next week at five o'clock tomorrow night. So I'm a full day. I don't know why I said next week. Um, but you guys can find me um, on Candid Cinema on YouTube. I do YouTube reviews, obviously movie reviews, television reviews. I still have to catch up on my what if. Um, you can check out my website. I have all my TIFF coverage there too. My Dune review is up on CandidXCinema.com. And yeah, I have hot takes. I like Venom and we'll get into that. So... Yeah. Oh yeah, we will definitely <laughs> get into that. And uh, yeah, the uh, the TIFF stuff is slowly but surely coming out. And again, yeah. you had the incredible coverage you had on your on your YouTube channel as well as on your website. So definitely check yeah. her out. Uh, Dune, Amanda, I, I it can't get you soon enough. I am so excited for it. I can't wait. I I'm can't excited wait. for you. <laughs> oh, it's, it's it's almost here. I can't wait to go to Arrakis and get all doomed up. I, mm -hmm. I cannot wait. But hey, this is one of two of our amazing co-hosts. And this guy here, man, uh, again, I can't thank Amanda and, and Chris, who I'm going to bring in here in a second. I can't think of him enough. This man is in, in Florida right now, living his best <laughs> life. But yeah, he took the time out of his, his busy schedule uh, out in Florida to spend some time with us on tonight's finale. And I'm talking about the one and only Chris from Taze Take. What's going on, my man? Gang, 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 gang. What gang. up, man? How could Happy it be a Wednesday, Wednesday. Without, without the Ace Club? So. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You out in Florida, Chris. How, how's the weather treating you out there, man? Well, we groove and I haven't seen a raindrop yet. 90 degrees. Oof. What are you going to do? Nice. Jealous. You can't complain. Can't complain, <laughs> man. But what you, you got a wedding you say you're out there doing, Chris, celebrating a, a wedding you said? Young love is a beautiful thing, man. Yeah, it's man. not my wedding, but it's still going to be <laughs> For sure, man. Well, hey, Chris, you know, again, like I said to Amanda, man, I can't thank you enough for tuning, for coming in every single week, bringing in the, the amazing takes, and, and again, just seeing this this friendship develop over this last uh, 10 months. It's crazy. We were yeah. obviously talking last year, but I'm, I'm just so appreciative of both of you all. But, man, hey, Chris, why don't you let people know where you're at, what you're about, and all the dope content you have for the fine folks out there. Well, first, I got to give a shout out to Adam Sandler. I never heard of a, a Adam Sandler marathon. They need to, I guess, give him his flowers. <laughs> when you were saying, I was like, man, what's my favorite Adam Sandler? It used to be uh, 
Billy Madison, like the like the classic yeah. classics. Me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. And then you know, Uncut Gems. I just love that movie, which is like a totally different one. But oh, I, yeah. my oh, yeah. sleeper pick is just go with it. That's so good. Is, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. I, like I don't. That. I don't know who. It, I mean. Damn, is is Waterboy better than Billy Madison? Waterboy is probably better than Billy Madison. But the Gula Mangada. This dude's got range. Um, but I I do I always love just go with it. Like I bought that like when I when no one would have bought that. Um, Same. So, yeah. it's a fun so shout movie. out to him. Yeah. Um. Y- 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 y'all know the vibes is, is Chris Tate. Rock, Rock and Tape's take. Uh, all the information is, is the link below. Um, TV reviews, movies reviews, documentary reviews. Reality dating shows. I I have no shame in my game in my review game. So um, if you don't subscribe, get into that. Um, we out here. Let's do it. You already know, man. I can't wait to hear Chris's thoughts on uh, because again, we love us some hot tea on this panel, and and C is coming right around the corner, man. I know we got some C fans in here, and uh, to see what Joe and what's her name, Love or Joy, whatever her name was, they're gonna be. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. But yeah, you know what? Yes, Let, yes. Let's let's okay. continue this Adam Sandler conversation for a little bit. Hmm. Favorite, I just want to know because you brought up some great movies, Chris. Yeah. So, man, I'm going to bring it back to you, especially yeah. since you saw some Adam Sandler today. What mm-hmm. is your favorite Adam Sandler film? And everyone in the comments, too, let's, let's talk about some Sandman for a little bit. Okay. So, I absolutely adore Billy Madison. I love oh, it so, so much. So Growing good. up, that was my favorite. I would sing yeah. back to school every single time I'd go yeah. back to school. So, uh, I love that one. I think it's the yep. funniest one, to be perfectly honest. Like, I've been, how I was howling yeah. today, like dying of laughter. <laughs> um his best performance though uncut gems hands yeah, down yeah. that movie blew my mind so it was <laughs> like Tense. it's phenomenal but yeah. yeah funny wise and like i absolutely adore it it's definitely billy madison, billy madison. and then I performance just, is uncut gems just getting ready to type big daddy and so uh, when nino <laughs> typed it because oh, that's my big, big daddy that's, that's my too. pick man that's my pick <laughs> that, that film is on. it holds it is so funny it's it so is funny. so goddamn funny uh hip hip hop Hip hop anonymous. <laughs> I love that. I love that film. Oh, oh, he's so that one, that one might that might have the most like longevity. Like I've yeah. I've really watched Billy Madison recently, like naturally. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I'm sure Big Daddy, like Big Daddy's still good. It does oh, hold yeah, up, right. I have to admit. I Charles like it now pronounce you Chuck what? and Larry too was good. That's a good one. That's a good one. He yeah, he Chuck started the transition Larry, to the buddy Chuck films. Yeah. Those random movies that if I yep. see it on TV, I'm not I'm not changing the channel. Like, right. It doesn't yeah. matter what part it's on. That's a good one. What a great message too. Yeah, Very true. Hey, we need some salmon in the MCU. Why well, about that, uh, Kevin Feige? Let's get he would have been Ant Man in another life. He would have, he would have in the 90s. Cassie he would have. That is so great. That is so great. But hey, let's shout out to everyone and showing some love tonight. Hey. We got C coming in here as he always do. Uh, what's going on? We got Demon in the building. Mm-hmm. What's going on to you? We just got some amazing people in here. So let's continue this great conversation again. Thumbs up, share the video, comment, subscribe to these incredible people, and let's have some fun times. So, speaking of fun times, Amanda. Mm-hmm. A movie came out last week uh, by the name of Ventum, Let There Be Carnage. And Amanda, uh, it, it did some things. It did some things did last some week things. at the box office. Uh, yeah. 90 million domestically at the box office, which is crazy because 80 million was the money that it made three years ago in a non pandemic market. It mm-hmm. made more, ladies and gentlemen, more. Mm-hmm. I don't know how that's even possible, but it 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 Venom made it possible. It's currently at a hundred and uh, hundred and nine million. Uh, it, it's going to make more money. I mean, we'll see what the what the drop off is this weekend because they got some heavy hitters coming out these next few weeks. But mm-hmm. Amanda, starting with you, uh, I know you're a Venom fan, and we're going to get to it here in a second. But I didn't expect ninety million dollars. Like, where is is this Spider Man fans? Is it Venom fans? Is it casual fans? Is it who who is? Where is this money coming from? It, you know what? I didn't expect it either, especially during a pandemic. But yeah, it's crazy. to even exceed the money from you know the first one, I was mm-hmm. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. But I think it has to deal with like people love Venom, and then you have all the Spidey fans. They were talking about the post credit scene, and like that's just like for fans. But the general audience, because it has a PG thirteen rating and not an R rating, it's technically a family movie, and you can bring the whole fam to go watch it. Yeah. Because there were kids in my screening, and they were dying of laughter. So I was like, <laughs> I was just so happy that they were having a good time. Yeah. But the thing with Venom and the reason why I love it is that it does not take itself seriously whatsoever. Mm-hmm. It, it it knows what it is. And Tom Hardy, true, I true. think, really understands the source material and how to play Venom and how to bring that, you know, the relationship of Eddie Brock and Venom to the screen because he did co-write the script. So I think he just 
like built upon the relationship from the first one, but really yeah. made it his own. So I I think that it has a lot to do with like the whole buddy vibe in with Venom. And then they made the second one like a love story, which was hilarious <laughs> to me. Romance, yeah. It was so cute, but it's just, it's fun. And because it's campy, over the top, stupid, really dumb, like that's fine for Venom. And yeah. like, I, that's exactly what I expect from it. So for me, it's like, I'm going to go turn my brain off for a little bit and just mm -hmm. see what the hell they're going to do. And I was dying of laughter. So it was a good time for me. Hey, I mean, same question for you, Chris. Like I said, a man, and, and she said it so well in regards to, to, to the audience, but I, I'm still like curious on this film not only beat Marvel, Black Widow, and Shang-Chi, but it, it, it beat its own movie uh, as far as box office three years mm -hmm. ago. How, how does this happen, Chris? Where, where is this money coming from, my friend? Where is it, yeah. where is it coming from? I think we, we're all in a multiverse of just like another situation <laughs> where there is no pandemic. We have to be. <laughs> and this movie's actually good. I, I, you know, Black Widow, I'll give it over Black Widow. Black Widow came out earlier in the vaccine years and right, times. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. Venom, like, think, I mean, that post credit scene had people talking and, and, and buzzing. And, it and did. like, you, you can argue yeah. you know, people are going to go spend money to go see a post credit scene. And I think the answer I is yes. It did, yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think it's of course, is 10 times better than Venom, but no one mm -hmm. has ever heard of it. So it's like, yeah. that's a new name. You have, to, you have to get people to come outside and just support Marvel. Yep. Venom is Venom, is like the most popular probably bad guy outside of like DC. I, I guess maybe he's most, one of the most popular outside of DC period. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. besides yeah. Uh, the Joker maybe, but I mean, yeah, yeah. he's. And, uh, yeah. DC. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like, you're going to go, but it's just like, I wasn't expecting that. I, I, I thought it'd be good, but I didn't expect that. So it's like a random weekend. Too. I mean, of course there's no other movies big that came out with, against it. That's no. fair. By no. design. Oof. They're so uh, smart. So smart. But, which is Sony. You don't normally yeah. hear that word with Sony. It's smart. It's <laughs> a smart business. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We'll talk about, I guess we'll talk about the content. Later. We're going to transition to content, but everyone that's watching us live, we got Michael in the chat. What's going on, my friend? Uh, I just want to know how you guys feel about that. I, again, like Amanda said and Chris said, I don't think any of us ex expected 90. I was thinking, you know, chunk no. numbers, maybe 60, 70, uh, but $90 million. And it, uh, it, it, ba it baffles me. Uh, now, I do think, and I'm not bashing on the film at all, but I do think it's going to have a significant drop off next weekend with um, yeah. uh, in the next few weeks. But it's only yeah, diehard yeah. that's going to run out and just watch for post credits. So you'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll maybe see. we'll be eating our words. Well, yeah, I mean, you can definitely mark it on your calendar, Amanda. Venom three will be coming. You know, that's a given. That's a, without a hesitation. Uh, Someone's yeah, going to take this, and uh, like, uh, especially after we talk about this post credit scene. But let's talk about the film for a little bit. Starting with you, Amanda, who has her review on her channel now. Definitely check it out. But just briefly, Amanda, just your take on mm -hmm. just touching a little bit on the narrative, uh, the story. I know you said we, we cut the brain off, but just from a yeah. narrative standpoint, <laughs> what do you think about the story? And, you know, we can transition to some of your favorite moments and uh, your thoughts on yeah. the characters as well. Well, I think that... Okay, I'm going to touch upon a negative, but I put it as like a positive spin on it. I think that editing is what made this movie like really suffer. And the pacing was really just, it was like touch and go because of the rough cuts. But mm -hmm. for me, it's like Andy Serkis looked at it like this is a comic book movie. We're going to literally take these characters out of the panels and flip through as fast as we can as if the audience good, is actually yeah. like going through it and reading it that fast. Yeah. Like that's the way that I process is like cut here, cut here. This is what's happening the exact same time as this other thing. And I think that was something that Andy wanted to do. And I, that's what I loved about his direction was just, he was having fun with it. And you can tell that that was translating to screen. And yeah. then even with Tom Hardy and Woody Harrelson and their banter, which the dialogue wasn't that great because you know it was just kind of cringy at times, yeah. but it was just still so much fun to watch them play within this space that Andy Serkis made for them because they're, they're also very committed, all of them. Every single I'll actor that. Yeah. committed. They knew what they wanted, but yeah. they had fun. And yeah. sometimes that you know, majority of the time, not even sometimes that doesn't, that doesn't really happen anymore where they're just like, we're going to play, especially with Woody Harrelson, who should not have been Cletus Cassidy, <laughs> but I can watch him in literally anything. And he yeah. sold it for what it was. So I think that like, there are some negatives, but yeah. with a positive spin on it, you can see that just because they're committed and they had fun, like that's, yeah. what's important for a B movie. Mm -hmm. I also thought that Venom and Carnage, their design 
top notch. I thought the the special effects were much better than the first one and that yes. they looked yeah. like complete, like <clears throat> full bodies versus two giant blobs fighting each other. 100%. So that's what, I, yeah, that's what I loved about it as well. And then just the humor and Ven Venom and Eddie just like going at it, you know, that yeah. love story didn't really care for Cletus Cassidy and, and Shriek and all that situation Thought that was really dumb. And she was yeah. used for plot convenience, mm -hmm. did not like it. Um, but yeah, I thought the action was pretty solid. Mm -hmm. I've been waiting 15 years for Carnage on screen because we were promised with Tobey Maguire. Yep. So <laughs> yeah, so it was it was fun for me for what yeah. it was. And yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, it's pretty much That's it. all you can ask for. It's having a good time. You, yeah. you said a lot of good things there, man. I, I definitely, some stuff I agree with you on. Uh, I thought Carnage was badass. I thought Carnage visually yeah. was cool. I'm yeah. a huge Woody Harrison fan. I wasn't necessarily fan of uh, Cletus, yeah. but you know, I'll leave that to a little bit later. But toss it to you, Chris, man. Yeah. Same thing for you, man. Just narratively speaking, how'd you feel about the the story? Which was like Amanda said, this movie flew by. I mean, they weren't wasting any time. Hour and thirty seven minutes, if you include the credits, like they weren't wasting their time. But mm -hmm. you know, they they were rushing to get to certain things and get to certain plot points. Yeah. But just your thoughts on that, man, and uh, character wise too. How'd you feel about these characters? Yeah, to be honest, I thought that movie was terrible. Um, <laughs> and like, I was like, I knew that I wouldn't, like, I knew I, I would leave the movie saying this movie is not that good. Yeah. But I thought mm -hmm. that the same thing about Venom 1. Venom 1 was a little better than I thought. So I was like, well, if, if it's as good as Venom 1, then I guess then, it, then they win. But I don't think I enjoyed it as much as Venom 1. Mm -hmm. And like, that's crazy because like you're adding Carnage, which we all wanted to see for years. I think yeah. the, before I yeah. you know, go crazy, I'll be brief. The awesome things, of course, we love Tom. Tom doesn't really make a lot of mistakes. He's fire. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. I like how the, the the stuff looks. The CGI looked dope. But then the last it's the last clean. fighting scene looked mm -hmm. fire. And then, of yeah. course, F this guy was an uh, iconic moment in movie history. That's a great line. Great <laughs> use of your PG-13 rating. Iconic. Yeah. I thought the story was nonsense. I I didn't like the girl. I, and I forgot the woman's name. That's Shriek. Shriek. Um, Naomi Harris. Yeah. Exactly. Hated, actress, hated yeah. that. Hated the way that she She's acted so it. Over, overreacted it. Over, yes. Did, didn't care about their relationship. Woody. <laughs> uh, of course, we all love Woody, but I didn't need him as that character. I thought that was a weird choice for him mm -hmm. to be playing that role. That's a weird casting. But I thought Very the story weird. was nonsense. And it's like, it's like you're wait, you're, you're kind of wasting it. Like you could, yeah. you could really do anything. Like the MCU is kind of like, we have to take calculated moves and like, yeah. we're so, like we can't shake the, you know, the house. Like no one cares about Venom. Like you could have done anything. And they, they're just like, let's just do anything. And like, <laughs> I was like, that's not what I meant. So I, I was like, I yeah. did, like I really did yeah. enjoy it. Like, and then like, it got better at the end, and then of course post credit yeah. scene. Then I'm then the whole time I'm thinking like, imagine a world where I could have seen this post credit scene without having any idea what <laughs> happened. Like, of course I never saw no, no spoilers, but like if someone said it's that epic, you have to assume there's Spider Man, right? Exactly. But I'm I like, think we all think about a world yeah. where like yeah. we didn't know that was coming, and you just saw that raw. You'd be like, you leave the theater like, okay, that's crazy. So it's like yeah. I can't give a movie credit for a post credit scene that might not even mean anything ever. So it's like, don't cheat me. Like, yeah. you know, like if I go to a, a restaurant and the food's terrible, but the dessert is fire, like <laughs> it's not a good restaurant. So that's, that's awesome. a great point. That's a great, I mean, and, and I'll be honest with you all. That was when they premiered in London two, three weeks ago, that was all the talk of town. It wasn't necessarily mm -hmm. about the, I mean, some people brought up the movie, but it was like the post credit scene is so epic. And I like Chris yeah. said, I think we all, we even talked about it a couple weeks ago. We knew it was Spider-Man related. It was just a matter of who, Sp you know, is it Tobey Maguire? Is it Andrew Garfield? Is it obviously Tom Holland? Which is a perfect segue to let's 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 get into it. Uh, and again, I completely agree with both of you all's, you know, the positives and the negatives. But pointing more on the negatives, like Chris said, Sh Shriek, Naomi Harris. I think they it's were trying to do some Joker, Harley Quinn thing, and it wasn't yeah. that wasn't the right characters to do so. I didn't mm -hmm. care about the relationship. I love Naomi Harris as an actress, but her like voice that she was doing and and. Granted, she wasn't a pivotal part of the movie, but whenever she was on screen, I, I just didn't care for her at all. The detective in the film, Mulligan or whatever his name, yeah. who, I don't know what the that blue eyes. That was so he, weird. Is he? A, he's. I know he's gonna. What is he gonna be a villain next film? Another symbiote? maybe. I don't even know how he got that in him, but I guess we'll find out. And whenever that film comes out, uh, but like I said, sticking on the positives, Ven or Carnage was cool. I like Venom. I'm, I don't know what it is about Tom Hardy, who I love. I, I don't know. I, I don't like Eddie Brock. I do not like <gasps> this version of Eddie Brock. He's too, like, he doesn't have it's confidence. Like, it's, like, it's not natural, right? It's yeah, like, it's like, like, you, like, just you, I'm, you, I you know he's guy. in you. Like, yeah. he's in you. Get used to it. Like, it's, it's part of you. Like, just act like he's acting like he acted in the first one, which made sense. It's like, this is new. Yeah. I don't know how to do this. 
I like, love Tom, man. But, <gasps> but like, they, it was me, a man. rough patch. It was a rough <sighs> patch between Eddie and Venom. Yeah. They were living with each other for a while. He yeah. doesn't want to eat people anymore. Right. Okay, right. his apartment's a mess. He's it's not listening to him. They're not yeah. compromising in this toxic relationship. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh-huh. so very layered and emotional <laughs> between the two. <laughs> but I, my question for you, Amanda, is Eddie Brock as the character, like, his, what is his, what, what is, what is he? What, who is he? What is he? Why is he lack confidence? Why is he a loser? And and, and like, I don't know what the root for Eddie Brock for. Like, I, I would I rather them just dive deeper into like the, and not even to bring up Topher Grace, but I would rather them dive into like he has some type of yeah. menacing nature. Because that brings me to this next point, ladies and gentlemen, in regards to this mm. post credit scene. I don't know how this these two characters are going to play with each other because they're both kind of, to be frank, they're both kind of like silly characters. That, you know, I love Tom Holland the role, but he's a kid Spider Man. He's not a serious Tobey Maguire been through shit type of life yeah. Spider Man. He's a kid still, and then you mix that with Eddie Brock, who is like who. I don't know. I, hope me, Amanda. Um, again, I'm excited to see these characters. Tom yeah. Hardy's a great actor. Tom Holland. Tom Hardy interacting with MCU characters. But this Venom, this lethal protector Venom versus this Spider-Man and MCU, how are these two worlds going to play? Are they going to be working side by side? Amanda, pitch, pitch me. Help me, help me, help me. Oh, my God. Um. Well, for me, it's like this Venom is still fun. Mm-hmm. So I think that could work with Peter, like his version, like Holland's right. Peter Parker, mm-hmm. and they could work together. But with that post credit scene, if we're we're diving into it now, I'm, I'm allowed right to. Okay, we're getting spoilers, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, he's saying that something happened with him in the past while he was like sifting through his memories. Yeah. So that could also be why, you know, he left Queens kind of. And I, I don't know if that makes any, if there is a correlation like this version mm-hmm. of Eddie Brock, like had to leave because of Peter or something like that, losing his job. Maybe I have no idea if that ties into anything, but for me, if we are getting Andrew Garfield, I personally think that the multiverse allows it to to give us that switch up and have Andrew's um, Spidey go That'd against be cool. Venom instead. Yeah. Because also Tom doesn't have a contract right now moving forward. Mm-hmm. And I know that Andrew would love to come back and play Spidey full time. So I think that it's not Toby because he's way too old and he already fought Venom. So I don't think that makes any sense. But yeah. I think that Andrew is the one because he's older. And I think mm-hmm. that would be something that could happen in the future if they you, switch out. I like that idea, man, because it already, I mean, if we've been gone from, you know, his universe so long, as you just mentioned, maybe he came across Eddie Brock in his universe and we just didn't see that on screen. And, and that symbiote mm-hmm. may have come across uh, that version of Spider-Man. I like I like where your head's at there, because, yeah. again, toss into you, Chris, I, I don't see Tom Hardy and Tom Holland this robbery, this beef, this villainous type of path yeah. of he stole my job. Stole, yeah, they'll be yeah, they'll be the best of friends. Exactly. You know, he would be literally. I could see Tom Hardy being his Iron Man and him looking yeah. up to, to <laughs> bummy, bummy uh, Eddie Brock. But your thoughts, Chris, on this? Uh, again, the the scene plays out like Amanda explained. You know, we're in one universe. Venom says, "Oh, let me give you a peek of what I've seen." And he didn't do it. Venom didn't take him to that. It was he. They didn't. You know, he just went to this new multiverse. As we're assuming, mm. this is low key WandaVision, Doctor Strange magic going on. But yeah. your thoughts on that post credit scene? And, and and are you excited for it, man? To see these characters clash and collide finally? I, are they Are they going to do that? Is that a thing? It, I just that's I what it looks thinking, like, man. Like Sinister Six. Sorry. So yeah, like yeah. that means like Tom's just going to the Sony movies. They're they're not coming to the MCU. Like what what's happening? No, I no. I think Tom's in the. This is Tom in the MCU. That's that that post credit yeah. is having Tom in the Marvel Cinematic Universe from Hardy. whatever Tom after. Hardy. Yeah, Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy is in the MCU after uh, that post credit scene. At least that's yeah. how I took that. Scene. I think yeah. I always watch the 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 new Spider Man's thinking that at some point you know like Flash Thompson would you know be Venom. Because then it's like, okay, this is the kid that you beef with in school, be, da, yeah. da 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 da, and then that's yeah. the thing. Because Spider Man Three, mm-hmm. like we always talk about, it, it's like Topher like had beef with this guy, it took his job and all that kind of stuff. It made sense, like, and 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 Mike said it in the chat. It's like I don't, we don't watch these Venom movies thinking he's a bad guy. It's like we're rooting for him. I like, I don't well, know. I'm not, but, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's exactly. a horrible. He, he's, person. Not, he's not even rooting for himself. <laughs> but so it's like, how are we gonna like? pick a side like it's one thing it's like if of course carnage was a real vi- villain in this movie so it's like yeah then maybe he has beef with the spider-man and then yeah. venom has to like save him but it's, i'm not seeing no venom versus spider-man i can't see it but yep i'm mm. excited to see how they do it yeah. but again it's like you don't cheat me like there's a cheat code to at the end of the movie that's not good 
I, I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Again, it is exciting just because you, you would imagine Kevin Feige has some type of plan because Kevin ain't just allowing, number one, Kevin doesn't normally like to allow characters that he hasn't like personally had some hand in casting like he didn't have any say into tom hard i'm sure he's happy that tom sure. hard's villain but i don't i don't think he's always like welcoming people's other decisions to impact the mcu so i would imagine he has some type of plan the only thing i can think about right now as far as whatever beef they could potentially have is is knowing that venom is the lethal protector seeing the first time that he sees spider-man is this is this the murderer he's a murderer he's a killer maybe venom feels like he has to protect people because spider-man is is a killer and i don't know if that's his whole angle at, and then they're going to clash and come together and i, I, like I don't that. know but we'll see and, and i guess final question starting with you amanda and we'll wrap mm. it, wrap it up will we see venom anytime soon and i'm talking spider-man no way home i know you mentioned sinister six you know we got post credit scenes obviously look forward to and then of course we have dr strange will we be seeing this character in the next six months honestly i really do think he's in no way home because well. the yeah. placement of venom ahead of no way home what was the purpose if you have that post credit scene like may, like that doesn't make sense to me like you could have placed venom anywhere else in the year but you put it like right before no way home and i think that he's in it because a lot of people are saying that lizard was in the trailer but i i've like i've been talking to other people and they're saying that maybe venom is in that scene in the trailer where people are saying that it's a lizard coming out of mm -hmm. the shadows mm -hmm. like that's a possibility <laughs> But if they're not going to do Sinister Six, um, then I definitely see it in a post credit scene leading into Multiverse of Madness because we did get the flip with the multiverse. So it's one of those two options. But I do think that seeing Venom in No Way Home would be a nice surprise. And do you think we get uh, a little bit of that symbiote on Tom uh, Tom Holland? Uh, It'll happen. Yeah. It'll yeah. happen. That would be pretty crazy. <laughs> that would be pretty crazy. Wow. Lead into Doctor Strange. Uh, Doctor Strange, you know, thank you know, we, we took care of all this, uh, Peter. You know, uh, I'll, I'll catch you next time. And then we see the symbiote just walk up behind them, yep. uh, leaving time. And maybe that, that's another thing. Maybe the symbiote is so attracted that literally he's attracted to Tom Holland as he's licking the screen. So maybe he leaves Tom Hardy, leaving him without a symbiote, leaving yep. Anne to be on her planet, this universe by herself. Maybe something happens to Anne and Tom Hardy blames Tom Holland for snatching him from his universe i don't know i'm just trying to think of how this is going to work but chris man same with you in regards to uh do you expect to see venom in no way home or in dr strange uh or i don't know what else do we have i don't think eternals will have like a post-credit yeah. venom thing i mean it could i, I don't know yeah okay. i didn't expect it amanda's yeah. making some great points yeah. i would welcome it welcome it a thousand percent but i was like yeah like this movie is so much like how much can they put in one movie yeah. like if, and if, if they yeah, did that are they trying hours. to make the best movie of all time or something like that like what yes, is that what yeah. they're trying to do because yeah. and then it's like with all the leaks we hate the leaks but like how could they not leak that because <laughs> we're in october now that's two months away from this movie yep yeah i mean i'm surprised that we didn't have i mean the, the leaks got out a couple weeks or when the when venom 2 came out but i was surprised that that spider-man cameo wasn't really spoiled months ago uh so who knows and also, who, but, yeah. but like you don't have to you don't need tom holland to do anything for that for, for that post credit scene to exist that's like they're just cutting yeah. the footage yeah if you put venom yeah. in a movie like he's got to be on set acting with these guys well yeah. tom hart there is a photo that was deleted with uh, uh tom hardy oh, wearing the, hat, the right? no way home yeah. hat from the production yes. Yes, so point. that that dude deleted it so quick <laughs> and it went everywhere <laughs> kind of like, but... what do you mean deleted like what do they think happens like when you delete a tweet or a post what do you think it this just disappears is? from existence it's like it out there for five hours black. Yeah. Think about a tweet, it exists yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's 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 out there, and we've and Amanda, that's a great point you bring up. Why why would he be wearing that? You know, he wasn't part of the. At least we don't. He wasn't part of the cast that's or the crew. Huge, why would you be getting a, a, a gift for a movie that you weren't a part of? It's a massive but, nugget. I think you're on something, man. And I think <laughs> we, if it's not a post credit scene, the whole like like Chris said, putting in Venom in that movie as well, on top of the return of Goblin and, and yeah. uh, Doc Op and Sandman and Electro, that is. That's a lot, but Murray. I would be sitting there with a smile on my face. It's gonna be, it might be sloppy because John Watts has a lot to put on one person's plate. Uh, this movie better be three hours if it is all those characters. That part too. 
Yep. Three hours. Absolutely. It has to be a part one to a part two. Uh, I, we'll see. I was man. happy that the, that Venom wasn't dragged out. So I was like, this is good. Like, yeah, no. It, it, right? It, it ran to the finish oh, line. To that. It ran to the post-credit scene. Because it's like, ah, blah, 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 post-credit. You guys got to love yeah. it and leave you out on a high note. But listen, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> that's just our brief thoughts. Again, Amanda, she has a full review on her on her, uh, on her her site mm -hmm. as well as on YouTube channel. Check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, Chris, you know, he already said he wasn't the biggest fan of it, but he's still hopeful that maybe Venom 3 might be better, Chris. And we have yeah, yeah still one hopeful. more thing. You know, I went, I went on opening night. Yeah. Big crowd. Open mind. Crowd yeah. was into it, you know, clapping, yeah. cheering, you know. So yeah. it's good energy yes. all, around, all around. Just just letting just you know didn't my work. Yeah, I, I'm right there with you, man. And again, we'll we'll get Venom three probably in a couple of years. I don't know if Andy Serkis mm -hmm. will be back. If some other person's going to take so, on the helm, uh, but we'll see, man. This is this is good though. We get characters it's that we good expect. for the industry too. Just the money too. Just like 100 percent exactly. And I can't stress enough that it it made no sense that a Venom movie even existed without Spider Man. So at least we can uh, yeah. get to the points of like characters that's supposed to be on screen together finally having some screen yeah. time together. So that's always yeah. great too. So. Hey, it's it's always looking bright. It's always looking bright. So let us know in the chat, guys, how you all are feeling about Venom 2, post credit scenes, all the stuff that we got coming uh, for the MCU and all that fun stuff. But we got some more MCU to talk about. Amanda, we had an episode of What If Today, and um, we got a mm -hmm. finale that was uh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy. Uh, just your thoughts as we kind of break into the episode. How were you feeling going into it? And after the credits ran, how do you feel about episode nine of What If with the oath being broken by the watcher. Um, I was excited going into it, but I did feel a bit underwhelmed with this episode. I mean, I love seeing my girl Gamora. She like absolutely killed it with, yeah. you know, the scenes that she had, but for me it just started this whole episode just felt repetitive mm. and that's what was bothering me about it because it's just like recycled storylines with different characters so i think that if they release this all at once instead of weekly and we were mm -hmm. able to binge it i i don't think i would feel that way gotcha you know, because we're introduced, like all these characters are, are there and it was great to see them together, especially like Killmonger and like Star-Lord T'Challa. I thought that was really cute that they were yeah, together. Yeah. So there's certain, there's some great aspects to it, but I did think that especially even with the Captain Carter scenes, it was like, okay, it's the rehash. You know, we, we saw this with a different the same story. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's, it kind of got to me by this episode, but like the last like section went with Ultron. Obviously, we'll get into it, but like yeah. there were some good things. But for me as a whole, it was underwhelming because it felt like repetitive for me in this episode. A hundred percent. There, there's definitely some validity in that, as you just mentioned, reintroducing Captain Carter. Like we already know these characters, right? Can we can yeah. we jump right into the story? And even I think it's been confirmed that the Gamora, which you just mentioned, Amanda fantastic yeah. character i want to see that episode but apparently there was an episode of gamora and tony stark destroying and yeah. and she unfortunately had to take it out and i guess we're going to get it next year which is great yeah and i would have loved to get a little bit more context of the character because we really didn't like who i want to know that story but exactly same for you chris man just again leading up to it were you expecting all the bells and whistles fireworks great finale uh and then ultimately when you saw it how did you feel at the end of the day yeah, I guess a little different than than Amanda. Like, I was excited to see it, but it's also like still like a cartoon. So, like, I didn't have like I didn't like I didn't think like yeah. my you know socks would be blown off. My I'm still wearing <laughs> my socks, but I enjoyed it a lot. I love these kind of collaboration movies. Ocean's Eight, let's go find our team. Like like yeah. these like small concepts. I, I love to see that. Um, they could have made it a combined episode, maybe with eight and nine. Maybe that's like a longer, just like a longer maybe. thing, and then yeah. just kind of just figure yeah. it out that way. Um, but besides that, I was um, I was into it. I do need to watch again. I only got to see it once. I told you guys, Killmongers ain't shit. Uh, <laughs> and um, what else did I like? Something else I wanted to touch on this episode. Yeah, I, and, and I, thought, I thought I thought Gamora was random because yeah. I was like, uh, mm -hmm. you, didn't, you didn't, you can't just throw her in there like throw that. randomly. Like, yeah, they could yeah. just pick, if, if that's the case, they could have picked any character from the yeah. MCU. Just exactly. Had exactly. the Spider Man from the zombie episode come back or something, but yeah, right, right, right. And I think like besides like what's it called Loki, of course, maybe this is one of the better finales out of you know maybe it's better than the last episode of Wanda, maybe it's better than the last episode of Falcon. Mm -hmm. Um, I, and I forgot about Loki because I was like, maybe this is the best finale because it's like, yeah. whatever, like yeah. they're, they're giving us yeah. what we kind of asked for all the characters up until now. Like what the, it, 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 they, they, I see what they were trying to do. So like, I was mm -hmm. like, okay, not bad. 
Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with what Amanda said, yes. feeling some of the repetitive nature of the story. Yeah. Uh, like Chris said, there were still some, you know, some really epic moments. Gamora, who, who Gamora, why Gamora? <laughs> it was kind of random, but <laughs> I always love seeing it. That wasn't her, right? No, I don't think so. Well, I don't mm-hmm. know. There's Zoe, you know, Amanda, there's Zoe. I don't, I don't think, I don't think so. I don't yeah. think it was her. I know her voice and it's just like. She only had a couple I lines. That's I do. So I know. Her. Yeah. I've watched Guardians on repeat. That's why yeah. it's like in my ear. Very so when, yeah. I was like, she sounds different. And I feel like so. the fake Scarlet sounded even more scarlety this week. I was like, damn, are you I'm getting obsessed. better? By the, by the Chris, episode? I don't know. Maybe they actually got Scarlet back because, or, uh, you know, the, the whole lawsuit got resolved. Maybe she came right. in last minute, fourth quarter, and we'll talk about Nat and maybe coming back to the MCU. very ironic that. how this episode That was like, so... You know, I was like, this is... <laughs> yeah, it's almost like it's planned. Like, exactly. It's like, yeah. you can't... You can't. Can you prove that this was filmed a long time ago? <laughs> yeah. It feels very by IE. Very much so. But no, I totally agree with you. I, I actually really enjoyed the episode. I completely agree with the fall, the flaws of the episode. But I, I just can't get over how badass Ultron was, and just seeing not the Avengers, but the Guardians of the Multiverse coming together, uh, fire, fighting. Yeah. Oh my yeah. goodness! It was just so epic, and I can't stress enough. Star Lord T'Challa. So Best. great, and I know Killmonger Chris uh, has some has some words to say about him, but I I love at least that they're staying true to the character that we saw in Black Panther. Like he's the only character that's pretty much almost like a carbon copy of what we saw in the MCU, good ways and bad ways. But I thought mm-hmm. that I love that he's a villain. I'm not a villain, but he's. He, he wanted to do good. I don't know, man. I'm a Killmonger stand, I guess you can call it that. I just love his being in the mix, and he still has his mission, no mark, no matter how world ending the, the circumstances are. But listen, man, Nat for the W. Snap for the W yet I again. I don't know how it comes to be that this Natasha, and I no disrespect to Scarlett Johansson, but I love this Nat and what if, and I need more of this Nat, hopefully in the future. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dr. Strange, Supreme Strange, Amazing. those power sets. Um, no, I I, yeah, I didn't like his episode, what? but I was like, I, see, I like what you're doing here. God. I like what, what Strange is doing this Come week. Come on, like Chris and the man. I mean, I'm this sus. man is OP. He is like OP. That. I mean, he, I don't know all the stuff that they gave us in this episode. Where was the Infinity Crusher or cr- whatever Gamora had? Where I, was that in Infinity? I War? got so mad. I'm like, where was the protection to... spell for the Avengers in the yeah. Infinity War? It's just like it reminded like, me of when uh, come on, come on. I guess when so Stark good. said, "Let's put this one down the garbage disposal." Yeah. I'm like, that. This is what this is. <laughs> I loved it, man. It was just so much epicness. But let's let's just dive right into it, man. First and foremost, I, I immediately had a smile in the first few seconds, uh, even though we did kind of rehash uh, Captain Carter's story. Yeah. But we're in, we're in Winter Soldier territory, and, and I don't play around Winter Soldier. I love this movie, and I love the kind of back and forth that they kind of recycle yeah. some of the words, but obviously switch. You know, what did she say? Bernard in IT yeah. wants to have a date with you or something. Uh, yeah. I just love or it. No, and was it finance? Or financing or something. something that or accounting. Yeah. I think it was accounting. accounting. Something, yeah. Something just made me happy to see those lines replay out and just seeing that whole setup and them going to the to the ship and back trough having that fight sequence there as we're seeing the recruitment of the Guardians of the Multiverse from seeing Captain Carter being picked up, seeing uh, Star Lord saving Peter Quill and the scavengers doing their thing to again. I cannot wait to see this episode of when we transition to meeting Gamora, who is a survivor of Sakar, a Sakar who's destroyed her mm-hmm. father Thanos. I need that story. It looks so epic. They're destroying the infinity, uh, the gauntlet itself. But yeah. Amanda, tossing it to you first as we get this, as Chris alluded to. Kind of this, uh, you know, mischief, this uh, Ocean's Eleven band as they're slowly picking up these characters, mm-hmm. multiverse by multiverse. How do you think about the opening here? Um, you know how I feel about the Winter Soldier. I can't really, <sighs> you know that. Um, I thought that was what I enjoyed. I didn't like, I didn't mind that. I just wish that they could tweak Captain Carter's scenes a bit more mm-hmm. to make them actually feel different. But like, I love it because I love it or else like that's the only peeve that I have with that scene. I love that they're friends and you sh- like mm-hmm. you show that their friendship between Nat and and uh and Peggy because a lot of people like wanted a romantic relationship between Steve and Nat and I was just saying they're like no they're besties like they're yeah. literally besties. Let's and this kind of shows that they were that close yeah. and that Nat only trusted him majority of the time. So I love that they showed that. Um it was really fun watching him pick up everybody. It mm-hmm. was just indifferent, especially with like ego. Like yes. right here, I was just dying. I'm like, oh no, they're going to Dairy Queen. What's going to happen? <laughs> I was like, ah. But it was, was it was cute. cute picking them up. But yeah, yeah, I really do think they missed not putting the Gamora episode in. 
because I agree. I agree. you can't have this cut in the episode and then not explain <laughs> exactly. what the hell's happening. Like that didn't make, I was like, Oh, what the hell's Tony doing here? Like he, that- I want to put a uh, armor around the world. It's like, yeah. you see a, I mean, yeah, I totally agree with you. Man. I was just like, okay, but it was cute. It was cute picking it up. It was like fast paced and it worked. Yeah. I think when the watcher went to Thor, I was dying of laughter because he's like, I'm not <laughs> listening. Funny. I'm kicking butt. But yeah, yeah the big, the opening was, was strong. I really did love it. I agree. I mean, Chris, man, same for you. This opening, like you alluded to, this Ocean's Eleven, when you're picking out these characters from different, you know, you got the IT person, you got the the, the thief, you got, you know, all the different people Amazing, that are good yeah. at their skills and, and you know, Killmonger's wrecking shop in Wakanda. And then, like Amanda said, Thor being picked up. He's the goofy one of the group. But your thoughts on this uh, opening here, man? Fire opening. Maybe I the agree. best, maybe my favorite opening of the season. Um and then I hated that Party Thor episode, and I even liked him in, in his opening here. I was like, all right, this is this is legit. Yeah. Um, and that, I mean, I'm not a fan of Tony Shade. I know y'all hate Tony Stark for some for whatever reason, but I was like, I mean, it's funny. He's a villain. He's evil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess uh, he's misunderstood. No, I thought it was I thought it was fire, and I love I love Carter because it's like then you we haven't seen her since episode one. A lot of these characters we've seen yeah, that's true. Once, so true. it was cool to get a nice little full circle there of like, oh yeah, we did like her. She's awesome, and I think we're going to get more of her. Fingers mm -hmm. crossed in the future. Look at you, Dr. Strange. Uh, yeah. But moving on to the rest of the episode, as the uh, the crew, or I should say the Guardians of the Multiverse, which I, I love that name. It just rolls right off the tongue. It just sounds epic. It sounds dope. This uh, this group of uh, Avengers here from different parts of the world. But they get everything set up. Guardians essentially... of the Multiverse. Got them. See? Guardians of the Yes. It's it's perfect, Chris. It's, Amanda it's... loves that. That is genius. <laughs> Yeah, take a second with that. I said it's, it first. It, just, it rolls right off the top, man. It sounds epic. I need some shirts with it. And I, I would love to see these characters interact with each other, too. But as we see, they're at the bar. They're they're essentially taking this right out of Infinity War as Wong is explaining the, yeah. the powers and all that stuff. As Strange and um, you know the Watcher are kind of explaining what's going on here. And, and again, it's just the banter. It's just seeing these characters that we've come to kind of know in the last nine weeks, except for you know random Gamora, who's just chilling there with her uh, her infinity crusher and and we talked about this last week and i want to dive into it again because michael brought it up this whole infinity thing about you can use the stones in these different multiverses but you can't use the crusher i, I don't know amanda did any of it click for you or why this happened the way it happened i got nothing i just got pissed off i was like we this this exists this exists and like yeah. we can't we didn't use it like what's wrong with you people chris why, so, why is gamora yeah. holding out man what, what's your thoughts on this holding out of uh this infinity crusher man yo gamora ain't loyal bro she ain't she ain't man i don't know which gamora this is good more bad gamora we don't know we don't know. look like but, when you get them adjustable bow flexes you know you, you can change the weight <laughs> that's what it looked like i just was yeah. curious i was like this scene i was like damn Everybody got a different drink, and I was like, "Damn, how, how do you know who to, what drink to give who?" I was like, "That was that was my that was my takeaway from this scene, not the damn crush." I was like, "I'm not gonna Wait, understand why." Who's drinking what? What's their favorite drinks? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Doctor Drinks had a martini. Yeah, no, he definitely sure? did. He definitely did. That's, that's a classic drink. But this is where the episode gets fun to me. This is where, and, and this mm. show has shown that um, the the possibilities of these action uh, scenes are endless when you go to animation. And you know, first and foremost, expect Thor to 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 get the party started as he you know throws lightning in the sky as they're about to celebrate before they go into war the following day. But they're uh, a day ahead as Ultron sees that there is existence on this planet. And just taking it to you first, Amanda, this action mm -hmm. seat set piece here, again, Infinity War homage to the, to the 10th degree. We see Doctor Strange, again, Supreme Strange, giving them the protection spell, which, again, I don't know why our Doctor Strange couldn't do that in Infinity War. Uh, maybe all the Avengers would have stayed alive, if it, you know, but neither here nor there. He gives them the protection spell. Mm -hmm. He has Thor's hammers going all over the place. And I can't stress how awesome it was to see the zombies make their return back into this episode. Yeah. But your thought on this first action set piece before we transition to the to the next one here. Your thoughts on this incredible moment here with these characters. Again, I got mad because the production spell, obviously. I'm like, if we had Doctor Strange at full capacity, like, <sighs> I just... It's, it's MJ. It's, it's uh, MJ status. It's ghost status. It's just, it, it's it's annoying. But I thought it was so sick. The hammers especially, I thought it was mm -hmm. so cool. And then just all of them trying to help each other out too. I thought that was 
you know, it was a nice touch. Obviously, the team comes together. Yeah. T'Challa literally stealing Kinda the Soul Stone. Honestly, I had PTSD when they mentioned the Soul Stone because they're like, give the Soul Stone to Gamora. I'm like, yeah. no, don't do <laughs> Stay that. Away from it. Stay don't far, give it to her. Um, but yeah, it was it was cool. It was like nice to have everyone together, different fighting styles, and yeah. you know, just helping them out. So it was it was sick. One hundred percent. And in a little little screen grab here, uh, the three yeah. first zombies: Captain America, uh, Falcon, and I yes. think is that Bucky? Or is that Bucky? I can't remember who that was. That's the boys. The, the bo they're coming through, uh, <laughs> Avenger style. But Chris, same to you, man. Your thoughts on this action? This first big action set piece is Ultron. Is like, oh, uh, these humans are so easy to defeat, but these humans have got a little bit more fight to them. Or not humans, because some of them are gods and and obviously, uh, you know, magic people. But your thoughts on this action sequence, man? Yeah, I thought it was groovy. The protection thing, I'm like, damn, that thing is protective as F. As <laughs> yes, right. Um, yes. I thought in my head, I said, <laughs> I said maybe you know, Doctor Strange, like this version of him, like he sees some things, so like he probably just knows all these like yeah, dirty tricks. Someone like, brought it up in the in like the if, chat. You, if you if you grow up in the streets and start doing some street shit, like you gonna learn <laughs> some new stuff. So like I guess like our regular Doctor Strange didn't have that in his bag. Yeah, Johnny, um, uh, Doctor so Strange was experienced. Uh, that's yeah. how I can do it. Makes me sad. Um, Mike, oh my god. <laughs> Can can we block Mike? Can he relax? Yes, Mike. Mike. Was Mike say? Was oh yes. my gosh, this guy's trying to get. I agree. Ruffles in here. <laughs> I, I agree. Hate flaws. I agree. Guys, they can't just be friends. All right, no, no problem. Not on this. Planet. Um. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Like Mike said. Yeah. This this version of Strange is way more powerful. So yeah, that's what I yeah. thought. I thought it was a dope little scene though. I agree. Yeah. And, and to Johnny's point, like you just said, I think that our Strange, yes, he hasn't fully, because the Strange in this uh, would have has been locked away for, you know, he's been studying all this stuff for thousands of years, I think it was mm -hmm. in his episode. So, yes, he definitely has the advantage, mentally speaking. But, I mean, you, come on, our Strange could have put a spell on our Avengers to protect yeah, them. It's like At least, basic. listen. After this, what if I'm going to need my, our next Doctor Strange and Spider-Man and also in his own movie to be doing some of this stuff, if not more Please. greater stuff than we've ever seen. His next movie, they're going to put some respect on his name. I, got I think so, Chris. They I think to. I don't think we're even ready for Doctor Strange into the multiverse of madness. From all the little rumors we've he heard and just knowing that Wanda's going to be in the mix, which, by the way, Wanda coming through with the zombie thing. That was, and, uh, coming in. Came through. That was pretty dope. That was that pretty was dope. Wicked. That was uh, wicked. Even though Ultron took it out pretty easily. Again, this Ultron, speaking of characters I want to see, and we'll talk about the end i want to see this ultron come back uh but speaking of comebacks scarlet or scarlet uh or i should say natasha romanoff she comes in intercepts the soul stone she talks to uh captain carter for a bit they're on the same page but they don't have time to you know kumbaya hug it out and come up with a plan because ultron's right on their ass and that leads us right into this another incredible action scene amanda seeing again ultron versus the guardians of the universe just battling and i trying to save trying to get this this stone again your thoughts on just everything that we see on the screen here from seeing uh, you know killmonger doing his thing star lord i mean the whole damn crew is showing us all their power skills again i love natasha i love natasha so i so love great. natasha and i just i feel like even with her connection with clint it was just one episode mm -hmm. and it felt like she was honoring him more than Clint did in Endgame. Yeah. And I was just like, <laughs> how did you just let her? I, anyways, that's a different conversation, but it just, it bothered <laughs> me that like the, the live action just missed that entirely. But I like this action, uh, these action, this action scene a bit more just because you had the attention on Ultron yeah. and then you had all of them firing at once but this yep. like yep. the camera was just on him at that point so I thought that was really cool that they did that and <clears throat> you just saw everyone's power sets and like what they're yeah. capable of and you know they were trying to get the stone so the tension was there the anticipation of like what's yep. gonna actually happen so I thought this was like wicked and Natasha again with the final blow I like that, MP, like that, is she an MP? I think she's up there. I mean, number she's one, I, I I pause this screen here because I think of my yeah. favorite Avenger, Captain America, Steve Rogers, and uh, Age of Ultron, Chris. There was a scene in Age of Ultron that we saw our Captain America, very smart guy, very hand to hand combat. He tried to choke out Ultron. I don't know what the uh, the strategy behind that move was, Cap, but we see these intelligent women as uh, Captain Carter and Nat are taking out Ultron in yeah. the proper way, not trying to choke a yeah. robot. Uh, yeah. But Chris, your thoughts on this action? Same statement? guy who said it seemed to run off some form of electricity. This yes. is what... Like, Listen, that he doesn't, yeah. he, he maybe thinks anything is possible. That that yeah. script is non-existent. <laughs> we don't talk about those lines, please. <laughs> <laughs> watch along. 
they mm. think <laughs> it'll be it'll be me and and some random like diehard L- Ultron. It'll be fan. you and uh, uh, Josh Whedon. Whedon. You and Josh Whedon. Uh, um, on the- <laughs> yeah, just hopefully he doesn't assault me verbally. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> yeah, you changed it to purple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not trying to get Mike triggered. No. Um, oh yeah, God. I thought. Yeah, I thought it was dope. I love. I, I. We all love Natasha here, but I don't want to diminish Natasha in in the re- regular MCU. I'm I a fan you. of I her work. You. Same. Because I don't want it to be like yeah. she's so whack in the movies and like here's. Yeah. You. yeah. I I don't want to say that. I want to give her her flowers in the animated because the woman is doing great and the character is dope. And but I also think that she's still a good character. Mm-hmm. Normally, I'm a fan. Um. But yeah, I thought it was dope. Scene. I agree, man. And, and, and as the scene kind of moves on, again, we're seeing everyone, Dr. Strange, letting literally his inner demons come out. They're able to pin down Ultron for a hot second. And again, that's where the logic question comes in and kind of contradicts itself. You can't use the Infinity Stones, uh, you know, you can use them all over the multiverse, but you can't use this device that can destroy him. But whatever. Uh, we'll, we'll just run with it nonetheless. But it's the name of the game. Exactly. It's animation. It's, it's cartoons. It's, you know, we just got to take it away for what it is. But we see Ultron somewhat gets the upper hand uh again the the team has him down for a bit but he spoils their plans but it's uh it's it's killmonger it's well number one is nat and captain carter they come up with the idea of shooting the um uh, um, the usb uh, stick the usb stick right into his eye zola into his eye and we get that crazy awesome scene of the two ais mm-hmm. talking to each other and, and zola kept his word for about half a second and shut down uh the ultron bot but ultimately he he, he likes his body he wants to keep it permanently uh as we see that scene play out which i guess amanda just shooting it to you again zola as they literally said in this episode he uh you know uh, modified or whatever they used to say mm-hmm. but he's still out there and i think he's still out there in the mcu but your thoughts on this uh this robot on robot action or ai or ai action if you will call it that what'd you think about that moment there i thought it was cool i mean like knowing that zola is around and can get mutated like there are endless possibilities yeah. with that and that just makes me feel like he can pop up anywhere it doesn't matter so it'd be like the silent Ooh. killer to be perfectly honest so oh no he left. Oh, there we go, there we go. <laughs> i was like no, wait I was say, no, as you just mentioned popping up anywhere yeah. we, we were talking about it months ago with um you know captain america 4 mm. that would be a good villain to bring back into the mix bring zola into the mix and, and that could be uh sam's uh a foil to move forward but as i digress but man to go back to it i'm sorry no saying? that no no i mean i i agree with you either, either like it's in in something captain america related obviously yeah. because it's cap but it could be like mm-hmm. another avengers movie too like he's 10 times worse is like we've seen like we can you know he's he's playing with different ais and that yeah. could be combined and stuff like mm-hmm. that but i thought it was cool mm-hmm. i thought it was cool i love zola i think zola is a great character Character. Um, and you know, he's everywhere. He's everywhere. Time, I so, love it. Yeah. I, I, I would, just thinking about it, that would be just like kind of perfect sense just to have Zola come back. As we know, he was the first villain in Captain America and to bring him back around uh, yeah. in the fourth film. And, and again, we know Sam, give him some cool villains to go against. And there's Zola. Yeah. If we get a version of this, it would be pretty cool. But your thoughts, mm-hmm. Chris, on this uh, kind of action set piece and transitioning to Killmonger, uh, you know, sticking with his own plans. Yeah, Killmonger go Killmonger. I, I said it once, I said it again. Um, this is a scene I had to rewind this. I'm like, wait, what just happened? Like, who just yeah. got double crossed? Yeah. Um, and I might need to just bring it back again. But I was like, I, I like the Zola scene. I love the idea of of the virus, um, you know, and just bringing the callback um, from from the last episode. And I mm-hmm. guess that would be cool for Captain America Four. Sam's gonna need some help if he wants to make that thing epic. So. <laughs> He also can't handle Zola anyway. So. Um, He's he yeah. can learn. He can learn. He can learn. <laughs> he can learn. Um, learn. Yeah, I thought this scene was interesting, and then it's just like, damn, you see like Zola, and yeah, like just the and the and, and animation too. We talked about it in the chat here. Animation's fire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, on this scene, <clears throat> and it's just the whole suit. It's like it gave me like Super Shredder vibes. If if anyone's a <laughs> Secret <laughs> of the Use fan, yeah. like it, like that kind of just beefed up, just like I'm out here, like. Like something that's like just out of like, like can you imagine the guys just like in the studio and guys and girls just drawing the stuff up? Like, how what yeah. would we think about this? Yeah. Iconic. It's kind of like you know, just like hey, we want people to just try stuff and be free and just yep. stuff that we can't or maybe won't do in in, in live action. It's like, what do you want to see? Let's let's play with it. Yeah, I agree, man. And I hope that this, you know, this animation inspires the live action to, you know, take some of these con- conceptual ideas and, and bring it to live action because we got 
Marvel has pockets, you know, or even an animation movie like a Miles, like a Miles movie, like a yep. Spider Verse for us for MCU. Oh, well, if not for MCU, but like non non Spider Man. Yeah, no, I 100% yeah. agree, which uh, it breaks my heart to see. I don't know if you guys saw the comments earlier today. The creator of this show said that they had plans of a spinoff series of T'Challa uh, as Star-Lord. That would have been uh, pretty cool to see them kind of yeah. play out to that. That would have, you know, that breaks Maybe. my heart to hear that. Yeah, but as we kind of wrap up the episode again with Killmonger's uh, double-crossing the multi or the Guardians of the Multiverse, Strange realizes that this is the plan. This is all a part of the plan. Get them away, their bodies away from the stones as he sets up this pocket dimension which is a great callback to his episode and him essentially being a watcher of his own uh as he has to watch this uh you know this endless battle between these two characters stuck in and frozen in time which i'm gonna need that ball to burst and i'm gonna need that killmonger to come back and that zola ultra about to come back some way somehow because that's just too much epicness not to take advantage of but amanda as we wrap up the episode your thoughts on this and and i guess is there any continuation on this particular storyline bleeding into a season two or is this just done for for what we get uh with this and then we'll talk about the end as far as live action but just your thoughts on this final uh sequence here as we uh wrap up the episode it's pretty that's the first thing that i thought in my head when i saw like it's just so beautiful (laughs) this animation that would be a cool like toy to get to like yeah like it's just so cool yeah probably (laughs) hot toy yeah but yeah i love that it ended with like the watcher and dr strange um because i think they have like a very clear connection here and it like it you know even though we i think we only saw them like i think three times interact Mm-hmm. two or three times in track so i think that if we can get the watcher and multiverse of madness i think that would be a really sick Fingers connection crossed. that way mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. my issue with this ending is that if it is mcu canon with the live action what does all of this mean in connection to it because for me it's like it's very open-ended right now i know we're getting a season two but how much of this is going to be integrated into the live action mcu because we also have nat here Mm -hmm. you know and like she went to a different battle with like a different avengers team so it's Mm -hmm. like is this possible in the live action? Like what are, who are we sticking where at this point? And like, I, I think for me, because Loki connects and WandaVision connects and Falcon and the Winter Soldier connects for me, this show in particular, like you said that it was Canon. What's it connecting to? So I think that's where my issue is, is that like, now that you said it, if you didn't say it, you said it wasn't Canon, doesn't connect to anything. I wouldn't have cared, but now you said it. So that's where I'm kind of just, in limbo with it and that's yeah. why i'm feeling underwhelmed a bit it's it's a it's a tr- it's a cheat code it is a tricky slippery slope if we can do this and establish a, a natasha romanoff less world and knowing that there's another gnat out there we can just pop mm-hmm. her but again it, this the whole conversation about stakes if we can kill characters yeah. and bring them back it's just like that that moment is taken away to a certain extent but yeah. chris man your thoughts on how we wrap up the episode with the uh supreme strange on on watch duty of these two beings fighting it out in this pocket dimension we have a happy ending for uh, Captain Carter as she sees that the Hydra Stomper has someone inside of it as we know it's going to be right. uh, Steve Rogers and we get Nat in this new universe uh, which like you mentioned man the serendipity of it all of just like literally Nat winning or not Nat but ScarJo winning her uh, lawsuit with Disney and literally came out with a quote saying I look forward to working with them in the future and they said the same thing I don't know if we'll get her back in the MCU it would be nice but just your yeah. thoughts on how things wrapped up man I don't know if that quote meant just Disney because it's so huge or right, did it mean right. marvel because it was i don't know how specific it was i hope that it's mm-hmm. marvel yeah but she could have just said like you know put me in you know jungle cruise 2 or some nonsense yeah like that. well she's working on that what was it the house of Tar- terror or whatever yeah she was supposed to be a producer and star yeah. but that got you know sign line with the whole thing but neither here nor there we'll see we'll see what the future goes to a movie by the way because it's cheddar cheddar it? cheese man it's disney <laughs> exactly Who, who's in that before we are uh, I don't know. I think her. I'm gonna say just her for right oh, now. Uh, her, okay. she's supposed to be yeah. a producer and, and and starring in it. And also, we're getting another Haunted Mansion movie, which has a pretty interesting cast. But I don't mm. know. You know, Lakeith yeah. Stanfield. I think uh, uh, Tiffany Haddish, Owen Wilson. Mm. Uh, we'll see. Disney's just again. They're just holy, making stuff. holy. Stay away from Tiffany Haddish. But yeah, yeah. Um, 
this ending, the only like yeah. I love the episode. The, I'll, I'll say the ending was probably rushed. It, it maybe it was like a little easy. I was like, mm-hmm. okay, mm-hmm. this is like this is the biggest threat to the universe. He sees the Watcher, talks to the Watcher, fights the Watcher, and they come through and give this dude um, like a torrent. Um, I th- I think like that was the my only like nitpick on the episode. Like, damn, that was kind of easy. But I was like, it's thirty minutes. They got to wrap this shit up. Yeah. Um. So yeah. that was it. Um. I don't know about the connection. I always said from the beginning, I was like, I don't need this or want this to be connected because I just wanted to be some side little, some piece. But then, like, the more that mm-hmm. they brought the whole series together, I was more inclined to come around to, like, that idea. Yeah. I'm not sure where they go with it. Um, yeah. That's a million-dollar question, man. I'm interested Again. to see how the, how the ratings or, like, the viewership is for this compared to the others. And I know it's, yeah. like, right. you know, like, behind or whatever. Yeah. But I'm, yeah. I'm interested to see if, like, just as many people are watching this it can't be more. I don't think it was. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think you bring up a good point, Chris and Amanda, in regards to do you, because I think, to be honest with you, compared to the other live action shows, there's a lot of explanation or a lot of explaining to do as far as, you know, uh, with Wanda, how does she become Scarlet Witch and everything that happened to her show? And Loki is just a whole, uh, like, explain that to someone would be, if it, I'm yeah. saying, explain it to someone that goes into another film and be like, wait, who is Sylvie? Who's all this versus what if? You can literally, it, it writes itself. These are other characters from other universes that can just pop into live action. We don't need to know what happened to Supreme Stream if you haven't seen What If, but if you haven't, go check it out. So it kind of plays, yeah. you know, in its own hand and kind of, you know, piggybacks off each other. But listen, man, I, I would be totally down to see a Captain Carter, and, which is the rumor right now. Uh, maybe she's going to make an appearance in Doctor Strange. And of course, Supreme Strange, if he can teach our Doctor Strange some of these moves, uh, that would be pretty awesome. But You know, kind of wrapping up the overall thoughts of the episode. Again, I thought it was a really good finale. Uh, It really sets the stage for uh, an incredible, I hope, season two with Eternals and Shang-Chi and and some of the characters that we've gotten from Phase 4 so far. But, you know, that kind of brings us to kind of the last point I wanted to get you guys' thoughts on and everyone in the comments is, uh, you know, we got nine of them things. But before we go to the rankings, just starting with you, Amanda, MVP Mm. of the entire show for you, favorite character of the show. Not 150 million percent Natasha Romanoff. I adore her. She killed it. Awesome. I yeah. agree. Chris, man, who's your who's your MVP? Who's taking that trophy home as far as your favorite character of this entire series? That's such a tough ask. Who's the MVP? MVP. Who was the character? Like, I I want a toy of that character. I want to see this character in live action. I want a t-shirt. I want a the tattoo. I I I the MVP, like Vision Ultron, I want the toy, but not the MVP. Like, not it's not my MVP, but I need that toy. Um, what do I call him? Um, oh my gosh, is it all Ultra Vision? Ultra Vision? Ultra Vision. I call him Ultra Vision. Ultra Vision. Ultra Vision. Ultra Vision. Ultra Vision. <laughs> it's, it sounds like a, like, a, like a kid from the hood. Ultra Vision. Ultra Vision. Um, <laughs> get your ass in the house. Oh, uh, yeah, get your ass in the house. Um, you know, I not, and I'm not trying to, you know, make it all creepy, but like, I, I think Star Lord, you know, I it's think Alan. Chad. Mm-hmm. Charla yeah. Starla was groovy for me. I'm looking at my list here. Um, definitely not Party Thor. Definitely not Killmonger. Um, yeah, she took Natasha. That's fair. I love that answer. I would say top three: Star Lord, Tasha, Coach Carter, Captain Coach Carter. Jesus Christ, Coach Captain Carter. Captain Carter. Oh, they Coach Fair. Carter is in it because it is Sam <laughs> Jackson. So you, you got some yeah, there. there. Yeah. Uh, top, top three. <laughs> you guys got some good picks. I think I'm I'm kind of in the same boat with you, Amanda. I thought Nat was she saved the, the universe <laughs> a lot she of the did. time, uh, the multiverse per se. But I don't know, man. I, I really enjoyed that Ultron. Even I can't give it to Ultron because the voice again. If it was James or not James, but uh, um. Um, yeah, James Spader. Yeah, James Spader. Yeah, yeah. If he would have came back, that would have just been icing on the cake. But I think because it's like that's such an iconic voice too. It's like, yeah. Well, it's voice that you don't need to be the exact so person. Good. Perfect. It was. But but I think I got to give it to to Strange. I got to go Strange. Nice. I think I got to go Supreme Strange. He blew my mind of all those nice. tricks. And, and and Amanda, you know, I am not a Doctor Strange fan. I got you. Uh, so I'm glad <laughs> that they made me kind of get uh, happy to see what they could do with this character. But Nat is definitely up there for me as well. But that, mm-hmm. that brings me to the next question, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Amanda, we got nine of them things, nine of them episodes. And I have the episodes here for you. Uh, yeah. From worst to best, from nine to one. The stage is yours. What did you think about these episodes as far as your favorite? Oh, man. Okay. So you said worst to best, right? Worst to best. Yeah. So from nine, okay. eight, yeah, then down. I would do Party Thor dead last. I'm sorry. Dead last. <laughs> I do Party Thor, um, the Killmonger episode. That'd be second last. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the episode that came before this one. Wait, no, that was the that was Natasha and Clint. So no, that one's a bit up there. I'm gonna put the Captain Carter episode third last, mm-hmm. just because as much as I love it, it was weak. So I get that. Um, so that would be nine, eight, seven. This is tough because I'm trying to think on on the spot. Uh, the zombie episode. Zombie. At so six. six. Okay, I'm sorry. Six. That's number six. The zombie no episode. Worries, no worries. Um, five. I would. I would uh, probably put the T'Challa one, but like I, I still love it. Mm-hmm, Four. Mm-hmm. I would put the <clears> finale. <throat> gotcha. And then I'm trying to think of the other ones. What am I missing? Uh, Captain Carter. Captain Carter, I put it like seventh. Put a little okay. bit higher. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Or six or something. Did you yeah. do about the murder mystery? Number episode three. That's... Episode three. You did oh that my right? God. Yeah. Okay. I forgot about the bad one. Okay. <laughs> Let me switch to T'Challa one in that one. And then I'll okay. put um, I'll put Nat and Clint, which is the third last episode. Yeah. The and Ultron I'll put winning. that second. And then, yeah. I mean, the finale was, finale was solid. So that was fine. I'll put that number one. Yeah. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I think Next. I'll do that. Yeah. Caitlin, right. really, yeah. I think Caitlin has Cerebro and taps into my brain. Let's see. Let's see. Because my list, I have it written down here. Well, so far, she, she, did, she did three so far, right? The bottom three. So, like, my okay. bottom is her. Like, I put Thor, Party Thor, number yeah. nine, eight, Killmonger, and seven is the murder mystery, the Dead Avengers. That's crazy. I like the Dead Avengers. So, that's. None of these are whack. I think Party Thor is kind of whack, but the rest of them yeah. are just like this. Is, I gotta rank them. I gotta rank them. So that's my that's my bottom three. I have. I did Captain Carter like that. No, <laughs> hold on. I can't do. Like How that. dare yeah, you? Yeah, let me switch. Though. Let me switch. <laughs> so Doctor Strange six, Ooh, Captain okay. Carter five, Zombies four, Star Lord three, and then I put two and one for for eight and nine. I just I, it's like <laughs> Infinity End Game. I kind of you know. Yeah, they yeah. go together. That so, like, sense. I'll I'll leave it like that. Okay, okay. Easy peasy. Let me see. I'm trying to pull up my list here. Um, <clears throat> I think yeah, I think I'm in agreement with you all in regards to kind of that. Party Thor was fun, uh, but the uh, like it didn't really have that many stakes. A lot of Easter eggs, you know. Like I said, a lot mm. of good laughs. They, they you did know. they did the venom too because they just threw in vision at the end of it vision ultron yeah to get people talking yeah no i agree but and and again too as far as like a character character wise we've seen that thor i mean not to the to the extent of that thor uh but we've kind of got that same vibe exactly it's taika waititi all over uh which again i love taika but it's that same type of character and i don't really see like that much of a difference from that character so that's my number nine uh coming in at number eight I got to go, even though I really did enjoy this episode, I think I got to put the the Killmonger at, at number eight for me, even though I, I love Killmonger. Uh, it's just thinking about it compared to these other ones. I'm going to put that in my number eight. Yeah. Uh, coming in at number seven, I'm going with uh, the, the Captain Carter one. Uh, it was fun. I love the first Captain America film. Uh, I'm really excited to see if they do anything with that character, but I'm, that's coming mm-hmm. in at number seven. Uh, number six, I'm going to go... Mm, Number six, where are we going with this one? I gotta go the murder mystery, uh, with the uh, episode three with uh, uh, Mr. Pym killing all the Avengers. Really cool because I love yep. a good murder mystery, it was a good like thriller to kind of see who it was. Yeah. Uh, but you know, that's my number six, so that brings me to my top five. Uh, I gotta go. Star Lord, uh, mm-hmm. T'Challa becomes Star Lord again. Uh, obviously, Chadwick Boseman killed it. Love seeing him having that stoicness that we got from T'Challa, but also kind of the more fun Indiana Jones type of character. Uh, and Cha Cha was pretty funny every time uh, <laughs> Gamora called him or uh, Nebula called him. That was pretty funny. So that's number five. Number four, uh, I'm going with uh, the finale that we got today. Again, a lot of epic fights, a lot of cool moments. Uh, really enjoyed it. That brings me to number three, which I'm looking at. I might be missing one on my list here. Um, zombies? Yeah, I was about to say, you, yeah, zombies, zombies, yeah. I haven't said zombies yet, and I love some zombies, and I love how dark and how twisted, and there was blood on the screen. Uh, Captain America getting split in half. That was pretty crazy. So is that, is that saying the number three is the number two? Um, she is number hard. Three. It's so hard. <laughs> one? Um, you, you, didn't do the, you didn't do eight yet. I don't think. Which one was eight? I don't think you did episode eight. Nat, Nat and Clint. 
Oh, yes. That's number two. That is my number there two. You go. That is okay. my number two. Uh, Would have Ultron won. Yes, because I love that version of Ultron. I love yeah. that Natasha. I love that Clint. Uh, the Terminator world end type of mm -hmm. thing was fantastic. But speaking of world ending, my number one is Doctor Strange losing yeah. his hands over his so heart or whatever. Good. That was the best character episode to me. Um, that was the best version of Doctor Strange <laughs> in the entire MCU. To yep. Me. Um, that was the best relationship between those two characters. But I didn't think they had much relationship in the film. Uh, it really gave me a, a 180 on Doctor Strange. I'm not even lying. Like this was like the template of what I hope to see Doctor Strange, minus the you know the evil side of it, but having that that stakes there and just seeing how that episode played out. And I honestly think that that is probably going to be the most important episode because I think we're going to get that character in the mix and seeing some and uh maybe some of those events play out in live action so i gotta go number yeah. one uh dr strange so um like chris said none of these are like terrible trash yeah garbage, garbage bottom of the barrel no. type of episodes but as we talked about in the last nine weeks there were some positives some negatives but i think at the end of the day which tossing to you first amanda overall what if was it a success was it a disappointment are you excited for more just your overall take on this uh first uh, disney uh, marvel mcu animated show um, it was a success. I think, I think a lot of us were just so hyped over Loki that we mm -hmm. needed something chill. And I yeah. feel like this was something very chill. Yeah. They spelled it out for us, the multiverse. Um, and it was really nice to see some characters return in different, in different situations. So I think it was a success, even animated wise. I think, uh, the animation did get better in each Great episode point. and it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think i feel like it grew on a lot of people that like animation is the way to go when you know cgi and special effects can't take you there and i think that that's the main takeaway from this series is that we got dr strange at full capacity like we yeah. we got many different power sets and their strengths and you showed it differently because <clears throat> it was animated so we had awesome fight scenes with like captain marvel and thor and like all of yep. that so yep. it was really nice to have characters come back um and yeah i think that's that's the takeaway so i think it's a success for them they can venture out and make more animated shows which i would really really love listening. they have the whole department so, they said a couple months ago they have a, a department yeah. dedicated like pixar they're going to be making many more to come so yeah i think it'd, it'd be great but yeah I, i'm really happy with this it wasn't like we had to think so much even though yeah, we yeah. always do um but <laughs> we're just true. enjoying we were just enjoying the characters and the episodes and the different portrayals and it was cool yeah, well said, Amanda. And I totally agree with you. The animation definitely was impressive. It did, it did grow on me because um, I think I think it was Michael that mentioned it or, or someone we had in the past. I think it was Michael. It would have been cool. I, and I haven't watched Star Wars Visions yet, but it would have been cool to maybe get a different flavor every single episode. Style, yeah. yeah, I don't know if it would have been crazy to see all those styles come on one episode. It might have been a little, I don't know. Who knows? I mean, into the Spider Verse did different. And it may be harder to like tie in in the end, maybe. Yeah, exactly. So, but um, you know, nonetheless, I thought there was enough of distinctiveness between each character and story that made it interesting. But yeah, yeah. same question for you, Chris. Just your overall take on again going into what if, thinking it was like you know somewhat of a throwaway uh, uh, palate cleanser before we get into later this fall with uh, Hawkeye and all the rest of the stuff. But uh, and how it ended up playing out for you overall, man. Yeah, I didn't have any expectations of it. Didn't think I would care about it, but it's much better than I thought it would be. Mm -hmm. it, it's really good, and it, and I think it's very easily rewatchable. Um, and it's, I agree. You know, starting with Wanda, which was like a PhD in like <laughs> Easter eggs, like just the amount, like just preparing for these weeklies, I was like, oh my god, like did I did I read? Did I look at all the credits? Did I right. pause the screen and look at what, who was on the news? <laughs> did I blink? I blinked. What what Stress. date was dinner with Mr. Whatever the boss? I was like, you know, from that Stress. to this, where you could just throw on a cartoon every yes. Wednesday yeah. and yes. just like yes. have fun with it. I'm like, yo, this is. A, a welcome change so like yeah. much better than i thought it would be i hope it tells them something like yo just try it out dc does it all the time like just just try a movie here and there just see, yeah. see what it's like <clears throat> yeah so I, Take I, a thought, risk. I thought Agree. yeah i thought better yeah. than than i thought it, than i thought it would be yeah, no, I, that's a great point you bring up there, Chris. Uh, taking a risk, and and that's and I know a lot of people always say this: the the formula of Marvel, uh, the friendly kid friendly stuff, or what have you. Which to an extent is, is it is true. It's it's just, it's a family oriented type of company. Uh, mm -hmm. But I think you know Disney and Marvel and Kevin Feige are starting to now see that people are going to come in drones uh, to see these movies, these shows. As Chris mentioned, and, and Amanda, we know this. Mephisto, what want that's that conversation that Wanda created. 
WandaVision and leading into Captain America, well, you know, Cap come back. And then obviously Loki, yeah. Kang, we all were kind of, you know, speculating that. And just going into this, it was nice to just kind of, you know, have a little break, enjoy uh -huh. the show for what it is. Obviously, there there could be bigger implications on the show and live action, but it was just nice to just sit back and watch yeah. all these different possibilities. And of course, we theorize, you know, these characters are going to come into the MCU, we're going to see them. But if not, uh, I, you know, I'm cool with it, but I'm pretty sure one, two, at least three of these characters will be making a live action debut 100%. in the next few years, uh, which will be exciting. And I don't think we need, like, people don't need this to watch it to understand where these characters come from because they literally just say they're from a multiverse. That's all you got to say in the films. And I think the audience would take that for what it is. Uh, but I really enjoyed this overall. It was a fun time. I still think as far as animation, I'm not a big anime guy or action person as far as TV shows go. Mm. Invincible is on another level for me as far as animation because it's a little so bit more mature, a little bit more blood, a little bit more uh, better, yeah. um, you know, straightforward narrative. But uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to say I'm very impressed by Marvel because like uh, Chris said, the DC wipes them when it comes to animation. So at least it looks like Marvel is at least uh, trying to play ball with DC. I hope that now DC can maybe make the live action, compete with, with the Marvel stuff. You know, we got DC Fandom next week, but uh, I think it was a, a fun show to enjoy on a week-to-week -week basis. And what made it even more fun are these two people on the screen, uh, oh, Amanda Lord. and Chris. Uh, yeah, we're going get to the, get the corniness out, guys. Now, I, I can't thank them enough, man. Again, from all the way to the beginning of this year, from WandaVision, nine episodes of that, six episodes of Falcon Winter Soldier, six episodes of Low Key, and then these nine weeks has just been incredible. And I can't thank them enough man again amanda and chris you guys are incredibly awesome i appreciate your time and i appreciate the friendship we've developed the people in the chat showing love every single week it, it, it means a lot uh to say the least so uh before we wrap up amanda just any any final words uh excitement level for what we got next which is hawkeye eternals spider-man doctor strange i mean it's it's a beautiful time to be alive amanda uh, first and foremost, you guys are both amazing. And that's what I want to say. You guys are so much fun <laughs> to have these discussions with. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited for Eternals. I think it's going to be something different. Yeah, I think that's yeah. like the number one, uh, on my list right now. MCU yeah. related. I'm excited for Hawkeye. But yeah, like, I don't this. know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas. Yay. But like, right, I, right. I, don't, I don't know. There's a dog. So I'm happy that there's a dog out. <laughs> But um, definitely the Eternals. I think that yeah. Chloe Zhao is going to blow our minds. So. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, so, and can't yeah. forget about Spider Man, our friendly neighborhood Spider Man, and all <sighs> 99 million characters in it. I don't want to think about him. I'm just <laughs> It's going to be stressful, but it's going to be fun. It's got to be fun. Chris, man, same for you, man. As far as anticipation between the Hawkeye series, which is, you know, Kingpin and, and the Charlie Cox is going to spin off into Daredevil season four. We got that to look forward to. And of course, Elena and, and Kate Bishop. Eternals, man, is looking pretty serious. It's looking pretty Stay serious. There. And uh, of course, we can't forget about that Spider-Man film, man. But as far as anticipation, man, are you excited for the future of the next three projects from the, the MCU? Definitely have about a zero percent interest in Hawkeye. Don't care about it. Don't just don't care. Love Christmas, great holiday. Love yeah. love the presents. Love the toys. But of course, I'll be watching it every week, and I'm sure at the end I'll be like, it's better than I thought it would be. Right, right. <laughs> Hawkeye is my favorite Avenger now. Please, yeah, I will never say that. That's when you know those things when they're like, if my evil twin came, yeah. how you know? <laughs> you'd be like, who's the worst Avenger? And then if I say, well, it ain't Falcon, he's the best. <laughs> show that one. Um, no, um, I think Eternals is gonna be crazy good. Yeah. But obviously, like yeah, it's like yeah. unfair to go against Spider Man because you can't compete. But Eternals, I don't know. I think Eternals has to go against as far as quality Shang Chi. Mm -hmm. I think at the end yeah. of the day, we need we need to say what's better between. Shang-Chi and Eternals, because those are both like new stories to right. us. Right, right, right. Spider-Man's in a game that we're not playing. Like no one's playing that game. Like that's Toby, an game level. Andrew. Like, you're not you're not touching that. Come I on. think the multiverse is gonna be, I'm of course, worried. just a, a small notch below Spider-Man as far as like epic level. Yeah. But yeah, the future is, is really bright. I was really depressed, you know, after leaving the theater and seeing Endgame. I said that all the time, but phase four, they out here like, just relax, Tate. Like we got you. So shout out to them. Shout out to them, Kevin Feige and crew. They seem to have the plans of all plans, man. They got their their slate for the next ten years, and uh, it's looking 
dark with supernatural stuff with Blade and Moon Knight and and uh, uh, all that stuff, and we're getting you know kid friendly content with Miss Marvel and and obviously mm-hmm. the sequels and all that stuff. And uh, we haven't even talked about X Men or Fantastic Four yet, so it's just like that we're we're barely scratching the the, the surface with the, the MCU. <laughs> but listen, man, again, I can't thank uh, Chris and Amanda enough for every single week just being incredible people, sharing some incredible takes, and it's just been such a, such a fun a journey. Uh, I hope come November we can we can get the Ace Crew back together. We'll see. You know, it's obviously uh, holiday season. We're all gonna have. You know, this year we can see our family and friends. So uh, we'll we'll see what the schedule holds for us all. But uh, I can't thank them enough. And everyone in the chat, too, that's coming in every single week, showing some love, our special guests. We didn't have as many as we did in the previous uh, ones, which is fine. But from... You know, Brandon from Just My Opinion coming on. Uh, it's obviously the fan, fra- uh, fan favorite Michael coming on. Uh, I can't thank them enough. And like I said, everyone in the chat is so in love. It means a lot. So mm. outro times, Amanda. Uh, yeah. Where can they find you? Where yeah. What's coming up next? All that good stuff. Stage is yours. Yeah, well, like I said, this is like my favorite day of the week. <laughs> so you guys are you guys are both great and amazing content creators always like work you guys don't sleep working constantly so um you know you guys both inspire me to keep pushing um everyone in the comments you guys are all great and thank you for dropping these comments and making it fun and every single week so it's great to talk to you guys about it uh, you guys can always find me over at amx nd reviews on twitter instagram and letterboxd i uh, like i said at the beginning of the stream i have the last duel tomorrow and i talked to elliot about it because he's watching it tonight <laughs> and i have no time to die so those will be up on my website candidxcinema.com and my youtube candid cinema so yeah do it guys again amanda is just it's so impressive not only does she be able to make incredible content but i love just seeing amanda just how she pops up on everyone's stream showing love the same energy positivity she's one of the best people in the space and i'm just uh glad to be able to call her a friend and again check her out guys she has some incredible content that is just so impressive uh and and again amanda i appreciate you so much uh my main man chris out in Florida right now, Florida man, uh, with the Gators and all and all the people down there, man. Again, Chris, you know what it is, man. I'm such a, a fan of your content. It's such a pleasure to be able to get to know you in this last year, man. And and again, the content is just continuing to get just it's it's incredible. The the comedy, I don't know, man. I, I think uh, there's a, a stand up stage for you somewhere, man. The comedy always gets me. I love your <laughs> sense true. of humor. Uh, <laughs> such a great guy, man. But if you want to let the people know where they can find you, what's next on Taste Take? Yeah, for sure. Wow. What a nice little preamble there. What is next for Tate's Take? I just reviewed, you know, Lamb. We talked about Lamb a little bit last week. That's a movie about a lamb. <laughs> Check that out if you're interested. <laughs> that on my channel. Um, I'm interested to see what the rest of the world thinks of it when it comes out, I guess, in two days. Um, and then I'll do uh, You Season 3. I know we mm-hmm. talked about that for a little bit. You know, Joe's back at it. Joe slash Will is back at it, is back up to his old tricks. I'm interested to see what you guys think about that season. Um, that comes out Monday. It doesn't come out, but my, my review will come out Monday morning. Um, but yeah, I'm out here. I'm on Tate's Take. You can find me in my, you know, link in the description. Like, comment, subscribe. And, you know, the, the people that, that, that log in every week to, to, to Elliot's um, live streams, man, like just the loyalty is crazy and just like just just good conversation. Like I've never heard, like there's probably been like one troll in the history of like the last year we've been doing this like it's just crazy it's just positive energy and then it, it, it leaks over sometimes i'll see someone from your lives like comment on my videos and i'm like this is crazy um you know amanda you're annoying i'm just joking yeah um, <laughs> i uh, knew that was coming it's okay yeah no, it's <laughs> and then shout out to you you put me on your, your, your top 10 list you put me on hush last week and just like these are the, this is what it's all about it's like people yeah. that you would never even come across in a regular you know three different cities two yep. countries <laughs> like yeah yep. that we've never shook each other's hands like it's just great it's crazy so yeah man. i appreciate you know you know bringing a young guy like me in the youtube space um, give me a chance to come and talk to you guys. So it's, it's always been, it's always been great, but you know, it's really nothing without the, without the community. So yep. look forward to the yes. next one. Um, and just, it just makes you appreciate the, the kind of the art too. Cause a lot of people just can just consume content and then move on with it. So I guess I underestimated making a channel. It's like, you know, you really don't know like, how many people like want to talk about the stuff. So yeah, yeah, um, man, it's, uh, it's, it's really cool. 
I hundred percent of what Amanda said, what Chris said, you know, they, um, they said it perfectly. It's all about community. Uh, if anything if, from these last six, 10 months that we've been doing this, man, it, 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 it shows, it helps when you can meet like-minded people, have a good time, uh, laugh, smile, geek out, nerd out. There's so much stress in the world. Uh, it's just so good to have a place to just kind of have a good time at. And I appreciate Amanda and Chris making this a, a cool place and a safe place to have those conversations. Cause like you said, Chris, we've had like maybe one person come in saying something crazy but other than that it's nothing but positivity and yeah. good folks and uh like, exactly yeah. exactly man so <laughs> i'm very appreciative of the community and all the great people out there but uh listen before the tears come out we better cut this uh this stream out and i got a movie to check out tonight but again i can't stress it enough the community is fantastic the, the audience the the likes the shares the comments are fantastic mm -hmm. but again amanda and chris thank you thank you thank you tenfold thousandfold uh you guys are incredibly awesome again guys links are in the bio subscribe follow do all that stuff you will not be disappointed uh and in this month we got some great content to look forward to i'm excited to hear more of amanda's thoughts with some horror stuff we got later this month i still haven't seen squid game i know someone mentioned squid game in the comments i gotta watch it i'm behind chris have you seen squid game my friend i'm on episode four in about <laughs> 30 seconds i, I got <laughs> i'm glad y'all didn't see it because i was like damn they're gonna talk about it i'm gonna be tired <laughs> no. i haven't seen it i haven't seen it I but i've heard so much about it uh but yeah this is a great month uh for some content and again uh mm -hmm. amanda chris everyone in the chat you're incredibly awesome uh you guys stay safe out there chris have a good time man amanda stay warm because i know it's cold out there gotcha. out in uh, canada <laughs> the sweater season all that stuff yeah. but hey ladies and gentlemen we appreciate you you guys be safe and we will see you on the next one.